right. I'm going to show you uh, a couple of images from a very diverting paper in the, um, the Journal of Ultrasound in Medicine. I'm going to go way out on a limb and say that it is the most diverting paper ever published in the Journal of Ultrasound in Medicine. The title is Observations of In Utero Masturbation. <laughs> okay, now on the left, you can see the hand, that's the big arrow, and the penis on the right, the hand hovering. And over here we have, in the words of radiologist Israel Meisner, the hand grasping the penis in a fashion resembling masturbation movements. Bear in mind, this was an ultrasound, so it would have been moving images. And uh, orgasm is a reflex of the autonomic nervous system. Now, this is the part of the nervous system that deals with the things that we don't consciously control, like digestion, heart rate, and sexual arousal. And the orgasm reflex can be triggered by a surprisingly broad range of input. Genital stimulation, duh. Uh, but also, uh, Kinsey interviewed a woman who could be brought to orgasm by having someone stroke her eyebrow. Uh, people with spinal cord injuries, like paraplegias, quadriplegias, will often develop a very, very sensitive area um, right above the level of their injury, wherever that is. Uh, there's such a thing as a knee orgasm in the literature. I think the most, uh, the most curious one that I came across was a, it was a case report of a woman who had an orgasm every time she brushed her teeth. This was, <laughs> then this was uh, something in the complex sensory motor action of brushing her teeth was, 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 was triggering orgasm. And, they, and she went to a neurologist who was fascinated and you know, he checked to see if it was something in the toothpaste, but no, it happened with any brand. Uh, they stimulated her gums with a toothpick to see if that was doing it. No, it was the whole, you know, m motion. Uh, and the amazing thing to me is that, you, now you would think this woman would like have excellent oral hygiene. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, Sadly, she, this is what it said in the journal paper, she believed that she was possessed by demons and switched to mouthwash for her oral care. It's so sad. <laughs> um, I, uh, I interviewed, when I was working on the book, I interviewed a woman who can think herself to orgasm. She's, uh, she was part of a study at Rutgers University. Gotta love that, Rutgers. Um, and, so she, uh, and I interviewed her in Oakland in a sushi restaurant. <clears throat> and I said, so could you do it right here? And she said, yeah, but, you know, I'd rather finish my meal if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, but afterwards, she was kind enough to demonstrate on a bench outside. It was remarkable. It took about one minute. Uh, and uh, I said to her, are you just doing this all the time? <laughs> she said, no, honestly, when I get home, I'm usually too tired. <laughs> She said that the last time she had done it was on the Disneyland tram. <laughs> I don't know. The headquarters for orgasm along the spinal nerve uh, is something called the sacral nerve root, which is back here. And if you trigger, if you stimulate with an electrode the precise spot, you will uh, trigger an orgasm. And it is, in fact, that uh, you can trigger spinal reflexes in dead people. A certain kind of dead person, a beating heart cadaver, and this is somebody who is brain dead, legally dead, definitely checked out, but is being kept alive on a respirator so that their organs will be oxygenated for transplantation. Now, in one of these brain dead people, uh, if you trigger the right spot, there, you, can, uh, you will see something uh, every now and then it's a reflex called the Lazarus reflex, and this is, this is I, it's, I'll demonstrate as best I can, not being dead. It's uh, like this, you trigger the spot, the dead guy or gal goes like that. Very unsettling for people working in pathology labs. Um, now, if you can trigger the Lazarus reflex in a dead person, why not the orgasm reflex? I asked this question to a... Um, a brain death expert, Stephanie Mann, who was foolish enough to return my emails. <laughs> uh, I said, so could you conceivably you know, trigger an orgasm in a dead person? And she said, yes, if the sacral nerve is being oxygenated, you, you conceivably could. And uh, obviously it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be as much fun for the person, but it would be an <laughs> orgasm <laughs> nonetheless. 
I actually suggested to, uh, there's a researcher at the University of Alabama who does uh, orgasm research, and I, I said to her, you should do an experiment. You know, they, they, you can get cadavers if you work in a university. And I said, you should actually do this. She said, you get the Human Subjects Review Board approval for this one. <laughs> According to 1930s marriage manual author Theodore Van de Velde, a uh, slight seminal odor can be detected on the breath of a woman within about an hour after sexual intercourse. Uh, Theodore Van de Velde was something of a semen connoisseur. He, uh, <laughs> this is a guy writing a book, Ideal Marriage. You know, it's a very heavy hetero guy. But he wrote in this book, Ideal Marriage, he said that he could differentiate between the semen of a young man which he said had a, a fresh, exhilarating smell, <laughs> and the semen of mature men whose semen smelled, quote, remarkably like that of the flowers of the Spanish chestnut, sometimes quite freshly floral, and then again, sometimes extremely pungent. <laughs> okay, in 1999, in the state of Israel, a man began hiccuping. And uh, this was one of those cases that went on and on. He tried everything his friends suggested. Nothing seemed to help. <clears throat> Days went by. At a certain point, the man, still hiccuping, had sex with his wife. And lo and behold, the hiccups went away. And he told his doctor, who published a uh, case report in the, a Canadian medical journal under the title, Sexual Intercourse is a Potential Treatment for Intractable Hiccups. I love this article because um, at a certain point, they suggested that unattached hiccupers could try masturbation. I love... <laughs> I love that because there's like a whole demographic, unattached hiccuppers. <laughs> no, married, single, unattached hiccupper. In the 1900s, early 1900s, um, gynecologists, a lot of gynecologists, believed that when a woman has an orgasm, the contractions serve to suck the semen up through the cervix and sort of deliver it really quickly to the egg, thereby upping the odds of conception was called the upsuck theory. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> if you go all the way back to Hippocrates, uh, physicians believed that uh, orgasm in women was not just helpful for conception, but necessary. Uh, you would have the doc doctors back then were routinely telling men the importance of uh, pleasuring their wives. Um, marriage manual author and semen sniffer, Theodore Van de Velde, <laughs> has... <laughs> a line in his book, I love this guy, I got a lot of mileage out of Theodore Vandevelde. He had this line in his book that supposedly comes from the, the Habsburg monarchy, uh, where there was an um, Empress Maria Theresa who was having trouble conceiving, and apparently the royal court physician said to her, I am of the opinion that the vulva of your most sacred majesty be titillated for some time prior to intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> 